Hi, my name is Shani Cole and welcome to my channel. My channel is all about me being a professional black woman who is striving to live a healthy and luxurious lifestyle. If you like that kind of content, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel. I would greatly appreciate it. The idea for today's video came after a visit to the Polin Boutique this past fall. The boutique is located in Soho, New York. It's beautiful. Once I got in the boutique, I didn't enjoy the experience and it gave me this idea to do an unpopular opinions video about Polin handbags. However, that was OBE because by the time that I got ready to sit down and film this video and I wrote out, typed out notes for this video and everything, I went to do some research just to wrap up my notes and I saw that Polin just had a huge price increase like out of nowhere this week. And when I say huge, I mean like most of the bags went up 80 90 a hundred dollars and I am really shocked I am I'm not shocked about price increases because the price of everything is going up but I'm really shocked about how much these bags have increased since I started buying them in 20 I believe 2020 so I purchased three pull-in bags four if you consider one that I've gifted to my niece the first one I bought was the numeral un it was the original bag that came out it was all over social media. I loved the uniqueness. There was no other bag really that I had ever seen and the contemporary price point that looked like this bag. I'll insert a picture because I loved it. I put my little Tiffany Twilly on it and my love for that bag lasted about three months because that bag was so uncomfortable to carry. It was very heavy because it has it's full leather and it has hardware on it and then it has a thin crossbody strap that is attached to the back of the bag. So when I wore it, yes, it laid flat on my side because the strap was on the back, but it dug into my shoulder really bad. It just felt like I was weighed down and weighed over every time I wear it. Now we bought my niece the nano version of the Numero Uno and she absolutely loves it. She wears it all the time. It's the small version with the crossbody strap, the leather strap, not the chain strap. I think the mini is the chain strap and the nano is the shoulder strap i'll insert a picture or a video of her wearing it she absolutely loves it has no issues i on the other hand couldn't take it and i sold that bag on ebay i didn't lose any money on it because by the time i had sold it that poland had done another another price increase so i sold it for less than what the current retail price was and before i go on i want to explain because i normally don't wear glasses in my videos and i know the they're blue light glasses and the ring light is reflecting off of them so i'm sorry about that but I just had to put on some glasses because I'm getting, getting headaches this week. So. so the second bag I ordered was the Yumi bag. And I was so excited when this bag came out because the moon shaped bags were coming back in style and this was all leather. It came with a beautiful strap and I got the bag. I did an unboxing. I will link that unboxing down below. And the bag was a mess. The zipper on that bag is so problematic. Like you cannot unzip it and zip it back. You can't. It just would not go and I immediately contacted Polin it took a few days for them to respond but they ended up letting me return the bag I sent it back DHL and it took a few days and they gave me a refund now the whole process I'm not gonna get into it but it wasn't easy like I had to email them several times and they wouldn't respond so then I actually hit them up on their Instagram then I sent the pictures via Instagram videos and then they finally agreed to return the bag. And the you third know. bag I bought was the Siamy Toted C-Y-M-E. So I don't know if I'm saying that wrong. But I don't speak French. And I think that's the French name. I really like that tote bag. However, it didn't suit the purpose I bought the tote bag for. So I bought the bag to wear for, as a work tote. And when I, because of the shape, like it goes in like this. It's not like flat like my Neverfull. Like when I put my laptop in it, my laptop never settled to the bottom. So it kind of like... It just was an uncomfortable fit and when I put the laptop in the, middle, in the bag it made it stay in the middle so I was only able to put things on either side of the laptop it just what the functionality of it didn't suit what I wanted to use it for and that was another one that I sold on eBay okay when I say this price increase is massive in my eyes I mean it's massive so I bought my Yumi bag in black on October 24th 2001 and I'll show you on my computer how you can see and as you can see, I paid $390 for it. If I go to the Poland website now and look at that same Yumi bag, they want $540 for this bag. This bag that not only I have talked about being defective with the zipper, lots of people have talked about. That is 
utterly five five hundred. I don't know if you can see it. Can I blow it up? Yeah, five hundred and forty dollars for that bag. Now, let's look at another one. Now the new Maroon bag. I don't know how much I paid for this bag. I can't find the confirmation. While editing the video, I was able to locate my invoice, and I paid four hundred and twenty dollars for this bag in twenty twenty. Here it is on the website. They now want. $580 for this bag. I'm doing a voiceover because I did the calculations and editing and this is almost a 40% increase in less than three years. So when I say it's huge, it's not huge compared to Chanel classic flat price increases, but it's huge compared to the original prices of Polin bags. I am floored by this. This is the numeral Neff bag. I never thought I would see a Polin bag be over $600. They now want $610 for this bag. $610. Yeah. So that's just a sampling. Please go on the website. I will leave the link down below. Check out Poland bags. You tell me what you think of the price increase. I'm not going to go through every one. I don't do price increase videos like that. I'm pretty sure somebody will come out and compare the last price increase to this price increase. I'm just floored that there's a price increase that they think that these bags are now worth five, six hundred dollars And I'm not saying for somebody they could be worth that. But my whole point is that if you built a customer base on providing quality handbags at affordable prices, meaning that sweet spot between $300 to $400, and then now you're saying, okay, these same bags made of these same materials, these same kind of a design aesthetic, and then these same colors are now going to cost you $550 on up to $600 and something dollars. I just don't think that people are going to see the value in their bags and they're going to say, well, I got that bag for $300 last time I bought it. I'm not buying another one for $600. I'm just not doing it. When they were really me in to buy these bags, they sold me on the affordability. And now that they've got me into the brand, now they want to jack up the prices. And yes, Chanel can do that. Hermes can do that. You know, YSL can do that to some extent. But those are luxury brands. Those are heritage brands that have been around for a very long time. I think it's very, very alarming for a new brand in the marketplace that only has one store, I believe, in America and two internationally to be hiking up their prices this soon in the growth of the brand. But maybe their analytics and their marketing is telling them that something different. So maybe their analytics are telling them that at some point they can charge a thousand dollars for a bag and people will pay for it. Maybe, but maybe not. And for me, it's definitely a not. I won't be. Not at all. Another issue I have is compared to the numeral Oom bag, the first bag I bought, to the last bag, it was like every or every six to eight months I bought a pull-in bag between 2020 and 2022 the quality of every bag I received just kept going down 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 and then I went to the boutique those bags are nothing like the bags the leather quality of those bags were nothing like the leather quality of the bags that I had ordered and had been shipped to me in the boutique especially like the tote bags they felt sticky like they almost felt like rubber like when you touch the strap I mean it just felt like it would like eventually just melt in your hand like you just got that stickiness like you had touched candy or you were eating candy and then like the stickiness of like Laffy Taffy was left on your hand that's what it felt when I was picking up the bags and I know that a lot of people come into the week and touch them and you don't buy you when you buy a bag you don't get the bag that's on display you get a new bag but I still was like the quality just wasn't there but the leather was very thin, very rubbery. If I didn't know about how they sourced their leathers from Spain, I would have thought that this was like faux leather. So when you go to the Michael Kors outlet, and I hate to compare it to Michael Kors, that's the only thing in my mind. When you go to the Michael Kors outlet, they primarily have, you know, faux leather bags. And if you read the little tag, it tells you it's not real leather. But aside from Michael Kors Safiano, their other leather type, non-leather bags they have that they're selling like their leather, that's how it felt touching a Poland bag. And I hate to make the comparison to Michael Kors outlet, but literally that's how I felt the bags felt. It's like, they felt like an outlet bag. And I was like, oh wow. It lets me know they've probably been cutting corners in the quality of manufacturing of their bags since they have had commercial success. And I think they've had great commercial success because 
when I was in New York, I saw so many women, especially in lower Manhattan, carrying Poland bags. Now I come here back to the DMV where I live and I may see one Poland bag a month. They're not as popular, but in New York City, a lot of women were wearing them. And I get why people like the Poland bags because they are very unique designs and they give you that whole quiet luxury aesthetic. However, I don't think that's for everybody. Well, we know quiet luxury is not for everybody. I'm not quiet luxury. When I come on here, I'm usually wearing some kind of color. And that's another thing I don't like about Poland bag now. Before when Poland first started selling their bags, they used to come in like red and yellow and tricolors and blues and greens. All the aesthetics that to me were special that you were offering this one bag or this one style of bag in numerous colorways. And now it's just like, okay, it's quiet luxury. It's no logo it's no color that's what the brand has become and that suits a certain woman or man whoever wants to wear that bag i get quiet luxury is a big thing now but will they change when quiet luxury is not that big of a trend will it go back to offering more of their, their bags in color i don't know i think they're gonna have to in order to sustain the popularity of the brand but we will see another issue i have with parlin bags deals with their openings so the majority of their openings on their bags that I tried on the boutique, I have a little bitty hand and my hand could barely fit. Like that numeral Neff bag, that thing barely pops open. Like all you can get is your hand in it and you would have to play Tetris. Like you would have to, you were at the store, you'd have to like take out three things to get to your wallet to pay for something. And that just doesn't work for me. Like why do the openings have to be so small on the bags? Like, well, that's all for this video. Um, very different than my normal videos, but I'm enjoying making this new content on my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until the next video, be safe and be happy. Bye now.